citrus leaf analysis provides a good indication of the nutritional status of your orchard. It's not the only tool available, but if you use it on an annual basis, it will provide you with some valuable information to help you develop your nutrition program. Leaf analysis is relatively inexpensive as compared to the total production costs of your orchard, and it can potentially identify cost savings in fertilizers and improve the productivity of your orchard. This video will go through the steps in conducting a leaf analysis. First we'll go through the preparation procedure, then which trees to sample, then which leaf to sample, preparing the samples to send away to the laboratory, and then interpreting results. It's good to be prepared before you go out in the block. There are a couple of ways you can take samples. First is you can get a special leaf analysis kit from many uh, laboratories. In these kits they have an explanation on what to do and how to do it. Secondly, they have a special prepaid post bag so you can post back your samples. They have paper bags to put the leaf samples in. They also have some gloves to prevent your hands from contaminating the leaves. However, I personally believe that washing your hands prior to leaf sampling is just as good and you don't have to use the gloves. In the uh, information that they also provide, there is a form that you need to fill out. This is very important, so it gets your name, address and all your details. There have been situations where growers have sent in samples and either these forms haven't been properly filled out or either the growers have not properly uh, put their block names on the bags and they didn't know which leaves came from which block. Secondly, some labs may not uh, give you some uh, kits and it's up to you just to get some plain brown paper bags. These are just the standard sandwich bags that you can buy from, uh, from any supermarket. But if you use these bags, once again it's very important that you write the block name, the date and your name on these bags so when the labs get it, they won't lose it. More than likely, with the labs that don't send you a kit, they will probably send you out a special form, such as this one, to fill out anyway and to send away with the, uh, your leaf samples in the bag. Often it's a good idea to write your name and block details on the bag before you go out in the field so you're well prepared and there's no mistakes. However, make sure that you always take a few spare bags so in case you're out in the field and you want to take a few extra samples, you have a few spare bags and your pen to get those extra samples taken. Before you go taking any leaves, it's most important that you get the site selection right. And that means that the trees firstly have to be of the same variety, age, size and rootstock. Secondly, soil type is very important. Soil type can have a dramatic effect on the nutritional status of your orchard. So if the soil type changes, you need to take a different sample. Sometimes hillsides can have different soil types at the top than at the bottom. The rule of thumb is there, you take two different samples, one at the bottom of the hill and one at the top of the hill to account for that change in soil type. Do not pick spring flush leaves from the headland or boundary trees of the block. These trees can get more sunlight and differing amounts of irrigation and perhaps fertilizers to the rest of the block. A rule of thumb that I use is I always miss the first row of a uh, block. Secondly, I always miss the first two trees along the row just to make sure that I always sample from within the block. It's important to select leaves throughout the whole block. To do this, you have to zigzag your way through all parts of the block, selecting leaves along the way. However, in a hedgerow situation, it's a little bit difficult walking through the trees. So what you need to do is to select a number of rows throughout the block, walk down each of these rows, selecting leaves along the way. Make sure you don't sample the odd sick tree in the orchard. These can skew your results. However, if the majority of your orchard looks like this, then uh, perhaps you might think about that there could be other problems such as irrigation or disease and it's strongly advisable to get some other advice before you start doing some leaf sampling.